Hey everybody, this is Fran Frischella, draft expert and basketball junkie. To everybody who's watching, let's get our friends at General Manager Games the subscribers they deserve. Just press that red subscriber button and immerse yourself in sports AI through GM Games content. And on Twitter, it's GM underscore games. Let's get after it. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to Franchise Hockey Manager 8 here on GM Games. This is just going to be a quick video that kind of goes over some of the, um, I guess the most important changes to the game. Um, mostly it is being done via, or most of the changes are being done in game and with the financial. There are a couple of aesthetic uh, aesthetic type changes as well, but primarily it's the in game and the financial engine. Uh, you can see the the... I guess the the setup of the game is is basically the same. They've changed kind of the the you know the way the tabs look and whatnot. But for the most part, everything is set up basically the same. Uh, you know your roster page looks the same, and your lines looks the same. None of this stuff has has changed at all. Um, some of the changes um, you have you now have a monthly and an annual finances page. You can see the monthly page here. It prompts you at the beginning of every month to go in and set your uh, monthly expenses. Um, this number starts really low and you build up points based. I'm guessing on how the team does. Uh, if the team does poorly, you probably get fewer points. You can see I'm playing with the Bruins here, and we've gotten off to a pretty good start. So we're generating a bunch of points here every month, and as you get points, you can dump them into scouting support. Uh, it affects the region strength, which I imagine just gives you more accurate scouting, player happiness, team morale, and then in-game promotions, you get a bonus, which, you know, you spend more points, you get more points. And then you've got your player expenses and your staff expenses. So um, you can help your team. Uh by uh, by uh, uh, by bumping these things, I imagine. I haven't tested to see how it works if you drop scouting to minus two or you drop team morale to minus five or anything like that. Uh, that's something I made you down the road. But I imagine the higher the number, the better. And then you have an annual budget as well, which you'll set on July 1st. Um, you can increase and decrease your ticket prices. You can add arena capacity. You can improve the quality of the arena, which I imagine just brings more fans in. You can build a new arena, which is pretty cool. Uh, your wage budget, you can add to, um, I assume that's for, because there's a salary cap, uh, I imagine this is going to be for coaching and scouting and, and things of that nature. You can increase player development and you can increase the marketing. So uh, the more points you have, uh, the more points you spend over the course of the year, the fewer points you'll have for uh, your annual budgets. So sort of keep that in mind. There's a summary page that shows you how many points you started with in a given month and uh, you know how many points you earned and how many points you spent and, and things like that. So it's pretty cool. It's just another uh, something else to think about to, to try to assist your team. Uh, let's see what else they've added player. Um, they've added player cards, which I assume is a, a prelude to, um, uh, like a perfect team style setup. You can see here, not much information, just player name and, and position at this point. But I imagine down the road, like I said, that this will be a, um, uh, perfect team. You know, this is, this is kind of the beginning of perfect team for franchise hockey manager eight. Um, from there, the biggest changes are in game and, and the first decision is, or the first change is, is you essentially have a play by play engine in, in the game now. So, um, you can see here, uh, as soon as you start the game, it gives you an on ice decision. Brad Marchand currently has control of the puck in the neutral zone. You can guide him on what he will attempt to do by choosing one of the following it gives you all of his options. And then at the bottom, it tells you whether or not he's coachable or or more or less likely to follow your suggestion. So you can actually run, you know, the entire play-by-play. -play. It, it does run a little choppy because it's literally every decision you have to make. So it may, you know, as soon as you pass, if you choose pass and he passes it to Charlie McAvoy, you may get an immediate another on-ice decision that asks you what you want uh, McAvoy to do with the puck. So it is a little choppy. Um, 
you know, maybe something neat to do like in, in, in overtime, you know, if you're running three on three or something like that, uh, that might be interesting. But uh, but yeah, so you get you get your on ice decisions uh, in between periods. It will ask you it will tell you if you have uh, players who are sort of playing out of position or not playing within the roles that you have them set at, you know, dangler or sniper or, you know, power forward if they're playing out of that role. Uh, you have the opportunity in between periods to kind of talk them back into position. Um, it may work, it may not, uh, but you have the opportunity to discuss uh, discuss that with them. And one of the coolest uh, changes that that I think is is in the game are the uh, is the post game uh, the post game page. So normally when the game ends, it just goes to the box score, right? And you see the box score, you see you know, game ratings and, and things like that. Now you can go into a post-game analysis page, which shows you, you know, it shows you the basics again. It shows you who had a great offensive effort, who played well defensively. But it tells you, like, in this particular game, Jacob Zaborl uh, had a plus six shot differential when he was on the ice. Mike Riley blocked four shots. Uh, it shows you which players didn't stay in their assigned roles. It shows you who the busiest players are, um, which tells me, you know, that, that the Flyers were were setting up their offense to to kind of go against my three of my well I guess two of my worst defensemen in Cliffman and Forbert um, so maybe I can change my lines in such a way where you know I protect Connor Clifton a little bit instead of keeping him on a line with Forbert or something like that uh, heavy offensive usage heavy defensive usage it has face-off advantages and disadvantages so if you have somebody who is really bad on face-offs it'll tell you it's really good on face-offs it'll tell you so I think that's pretty cool that it gives you the it gives you uh, kind of a post game analysis of, of what went on in the game uh, let's see what else uh, the news page is a little more updated. Uh, a lot of the same stuff, you know, memorable night, this player had a good game, this player's hurt, scouting updates, things like that. But it gives you um, some other interesting information, like top-selling jerseys. You can see here at the top of the year, Marc-Andre Fleury has the top-selling jersey in the NHL, Austin Matthews, Patrice Bergeron, Connor McDavid, so on and so forth. It does also tell you when players are not only put on, <coughs> excuse me, not only put on waivers, but put on the trade block as well. So uh, you'll get a notification or you'll get a, a message that says, you know, is this team looking to trade this player or whatnot? Um, the waiver wire uh, is, is pretty much the same. You can set it up to notify you when a player of, you know, X ability is put on the, is put on the waiver wire. Um, the difference is that it takes you right to the waiver wire page now, which is kind of neat. And it tells you, instead of saying there's an interesting player on waivers, it will say this player is on waivers and you might be interested in them. Like in this save that I'm playing with the Bruins, the Panthers put Joe Thornton on waivers. So instead of just saying an interesting player is on waivers, it says Joe Thornton is on waivers. You click OK, it takes you to the waivers page. You can see all the players that are there. So it's kind of neat. Um... What else do I want to talk about? Um, everything else is pretty similar. Depth chart is the same. Scouting is is set up the same, where you have to invest your your points and in, in, into parts of the world. Uh, staff page is all the same. Um, I haven't messed with the AI, uh, the trade AI yet. Uh, I imagine. You know, it's been tweaked and improved. I haven't uh, haven't really messed with it much yet. Uh, you've got team chemistry, just like you had recently. I just picked up Nolan Patrick for some reason. Las Vegas waived him, so I signed him. But it's got, you know, all this was here last year. Um, job security is still there. Uh, I wish, this is something that's really cool. I wish Out of the Park Baseball would do this, where fan happiness, um, you can see fan happiness is a 95, and you can see specifically why you know so i got I've, I've gained a point each of my last four games for wins uh i gained a point for beating montreal and then an additional point because they're our main rival um signed eric stall in the beginning of the season an extremely popular player so um i wish out of the park would add this so that i could kind of do the same thing with with my baseball but um yeah otherwise it's it's a it's it a lot of the you know, you, if you've played this before, you'll be familiar with the engine and, and kind of how it works and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, I'm, I've been really happy. You know, I played it a, a ton last night. It released. I created my, my Buffalo Sabres playthrough. 
Uh, and then I just sat in my basement, watched TV, and played Franchise Hockey Manager all night. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm a huge hockey nerd. Uh, and I am absolutely thrilled that Out of the Park Baseball continues to invest or Out of the Park Developments continues to invest into Franchise Hockey Manager. Jeff and Adam, Jeff specifically, does an unbelievable job with this, uh, and he should be um, he should be thanked profusely from those of you out there who are hockey fans like me. So uh, all in all, super excited about Franchise Hockey Manager 8. Um and uh, yeah, guys, let me know. One of the other things I can do is, is I'd be happy to, to put together some how-tos in the game, you know, how to manage your roster, how to, you know, how to draft, how to scout, how to trade, you know, things like that. But um, but from strictly a, a gameplay perspective, those are some of the changes. So thank, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, and I absolutely would tell you to go out and purchase Franchise Hockey Manager 8 on Steam today. It's a great game. Talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.